What's up guys, Lifting here. In this video, I'm going to share my dual ball lightning crit witch build that I've been playing the last few weeks on the beta. And uh, in this video, I'm going to show you the skill gem setup, the skill tree, and I'm going to briefly talk about what kind of gear or stats you should prioritize for this type of build. Uh, but before we get into the build itself, I need to warn you that this is a work in progress. This is not the final build. This is just a video that's going to show you the basic things about the build that will get you started with it if you're interested in trying it out for yourself at its current state in the beta. And at this point in time, the build doesn't have a very good form of damage mitigation. And uh, the reason for that is that in the beta at the moment, Arctic Armor hasn't been adjusted relative to the new Eldritch Battery changes. And this has led to me having to rely on suboptimal forms of damage mitigation, of which I normally wouldn't use. But whenever Arctic Armor gets fixed or balanced to fit the beta changes, that is the skill I suggest you will use for this type of build, at least if Arctic Armor is going to work as it did before. But unfortunately, a server wipe is going to happen before Arctic Armor gets changed, and because of that, I'll have to make the video now before the character disappears. So with that said, please understand that this is a beta build, not just in the sense of it belonging to the beta realm, but also beta, as in it isn't complete. It is a work in progress. So before I show you the skill gem setup, let me give you a brief rundown of the build. The build relies on ball lightning dual totems to deal the damage. And trust me dudes, the damage on these totems is amazing. A 4 link will carry you all the way to end game. A 5 link will get you really high up there. And a 6 link is absolutely baller. Especially when you get a bit of critical strike chains in your build as well. So far I've been able to test this build up until level 74 maps. And at those levels it absolutely demolishes enemies. And I'm absolutely certain it will keep demolishing enemies until the very late maps. And uh, to further improve the offensive power of the totems, the build utilizes the unique Reign of Splinters jewel, which works by adding two additional projectiles to totems. So this basically leaves you with totems with an awesome area effect comparable to what you would get with LMP, a link to ball lightning, but without the damage penalty. So basically you're getting all the good stuff area effect without you know, the downsides, and it is pretty, pretty awesome. I should say, however, though, the Reign of Splinters jewel is not required, but it is just so good, and I would always recommend that you try and get it. For defenses, the build, at least until Arctic Armor gets fixed, use a mix of armor and energy shield gear, a granite flask, and self-cast Enduring Cry together with the uh, cast when damage taken Immortal Call. Instead of mana, I further use my energy shield to cast my totems through Eldritch Battery. And because of that, you now have the mana to reserve auras and heralds instead. But I'll show you that in just a bit. All right, so let's start with the setup that you guys probably are most interested in seeing. That is, of course, the Ball Lightning Dual Totem setup. And uh, right now I have it in a Tabula Rasa, a six link. I should say, however, you absolutely do not need a six link. A five link is more than enough and a four link can do very well on its own. So, I'm using Spell Totem, Ball Lightning, Faster Casting, yes, Faster Casting influences how fast Totems uh, cast their spells. I'm using Lightning Penetration, Slower Projectiles, and Increased Critical Damage. If you only had a 5 link, I would take out Increased Critical Strike or Increased Critical Damage. If you only have a 4 link, I would take out Slower Projectiles and that would uh, leave you with Spell Totem, Ball Lightning, and Faster Casting and lighting penetration but luckily for me i have a six link so i'm gonna put these in again for auras i'm using reduced mana obviously herald of thunder you can use herald of ice as well if you want and that can actually lead to you know enemies being frozen by your totems as well i'm using discipline and the main reason for using discipline is to add it to my uh, mana down here as it is converted through Eldritch Battery. And with Discipline I can focus on getting less energy shield on my gear and thus have more armor on it. So Discipline is important as it adds to the energy shield and thus making it possible for us to rely on it or casting our totems or summoning our totems. And then uh, the last aura I'm using is Wrath. It's only level 11 right now, I got it uh, fairly late. But Wrath is pretty fucking awesome for this build as it adds as you can see right now, 18% more lightning damage with spells, and this goes up as we level it. So, pretty sweet. And besides that, I'm using the um, Caspian Damage Taken setup of a, you know, Caspian Damage Taken Immortal Call and Increased Duration, and I'm self casting Enduring Cry. So, when you're running around, you see mobs, just always press the Enduring Cry 
and you'll have the endurance charges whenever you know shit goes down and then the uh, casting damage taken will uh, proc and it will save you from the uh, physical damage right now it's level uh, 10 Immortal Call level 12 and increased duration, you can level that to whatever you want. You guys may also have noticed that I have my Brolem down here and it is a Chaos Golem right now. And I, I just took the Chaos Golem simply because I hadn't tried it before. The Chaos Golem adds a physical damage reduction to my character. However, the best Golem for this build would most likely be the uh, Flame Golem as it adds, you know, just pure damage. However, you could argue that since we already have such good damage and fairly poor damage mitigation right now that the chaos golem is better but let's say everything was optimal and we actually could use Octagama, then i would suggest going for the flame totem and right now i have i have linked it with life leech and uh, minion and totem elemental resistances and that that's really everything it takes to keep this uh, guy alive the flame golem will obviously be somewhat weaker than the chaos golem though and uh, the last thing I'm using over here is Assassin's Mark, and I've linked it with Blood Magic. And the reason I've linked it with Blood Magic is simply because, let's say I'm casting my totems, you can see my um, energy shield decreases, and then it starts to recharge after three seconds. Usually I will cast these two totems, and then mobs will come swarming from everywhere, and I'll curse over here, curse over here. The problem with that is that if I don't have Blood Magic in here, and I cast my totems, and I, you know, curse, around it will prevent my uh, energy shield from recharging so with blood magic i can i can cast my uh, totems and i can cast this as much as i want without having to worry about my energy shield recharging and that really is the only skill setups you need for this kind of build as you can see you have room to put more stuff into your boots you can even stop using the golem if you prefer and use something else so it leaves you with uh, some room to to add in different stuff or extra stuff if you want to. But this is the most important parts that I just showed you. All right, guys, so for the skill tree, I should tell you that you can also level this as a shadow. And if we had to min max, I would actually prefer uh, playing as a shadow because we get more cast speed. We get a little less uh, damage from the elemental nodes compared to the spell damage nodes, but I feel like the cast speed makes up for that and elemental damage uh, adds to the heralds that we're using as well, whereas spell damage uh, does not. However, as it is currently in the beta, I would still recommend that you level as a witch simply because the witch has access to the uh, skill gems as you level up. In the beta right now, it can be kind of hard to get the uh, skill gems that you need and the witch is simply a superior choice to the shadow in this regard for this type of build. But let me show you the skill tree and uh, how I went about it. Uh, keep in mind that what you want from the skill tree is uh, things such as crit, increased area of effect, you want life obviously, you want to pick up the keystone eldritch battery, we want spell damage, cast speed, elemental damage, these kinds of things. And you of course want to pick up uh, ancestral bond as well and totem notes uh, such as totemic mastery down here. And so the priority is guys to get blast radius for leveling, with your lightning tendrils and it's of course going to help with ball lightning as well but then move towards the templar part over here where you're picking up elemental list light of divinity amplify retribution and then uh, pave your way down here so you can uh, unlock rain of splinters when you've paved your way down here and you can unlock uh, rain of splinters or put it in then i suggest you pick up your ancestral bond and start using your ball lightning totems after that you can either choose to get more life down here or you can start to move towards the shadow part of the area. That's what I did and I picked up Eldritch Battery. In order to use Eldritch Battery at this point in time, you need to either have a leveled discipline a gem so you can use that Eldritch or use that energy shield to cast your totems or you need to have some energy shield um, on your gear. You shouldn't pick up Eldritch Battery until you have enough energy shield to reliably be able to cast your totems. So if you don't have that, just run around with uh, mana for a while and then when you get it, spec into Eldritch Battery. And after that, you can pretty much go uh, wherever you want in the skill tree. I decided to go for crit through Doomcast, Assassination, uh, Trickery, and I started to pick up Arcane Potency over here. I picked up the last Notable for Annihilation. Uh, you don't want to pick up the power charges because Totems itself cannot get power charges and uh, well, you, you can benefit if you want to use, for instance, like a power charger and crit, GMP, uh, Ice Spear, and you can generate power charges through that way and get crit for your totems. I honestly hate that mechanic. 
and I don't want to use that. So for that reason, I, I, I'm not using it. You guys can do that if you want. So if you do that, then there's obviously some benefit in picking up the uh, power charges. But besides that, I don't feel like it's worth it. But yeah, this is the skill tree. This is how it looks in the full belt guide. I will, of course, explain it a little more in detail how I went about leveling it. But I will, of course, link this below and you guys can go about it. Just keep in mind your priority is to go towards the Templar's notables over here first, such as Light of Divinity, Amplify, Retribution, and so on. So you can get down here and unlock uh, the Jewel Circuit for Reign of Splinters, and then after that, get Ancestral Bond. And there's obviously not much reason in unlocking the Jewel Circuit if you don't have the Reign of Splinters Jewel yet. If you don't have that, you obviously just pick up Ancestral Bond anyway, and, and then unlock it whenever you get the Jewel. And then finally, Eldritch Battery, and after that, spec into whatever remaining skill points you'd like and you need at that point in time for your build. And now lastly for gear, I'm going to tell you what defensive properties and offensive properties or affixes you should try to get on your gear in priority. Let's start with the defensive ones. For defensive properties or affixes on your gear, you should get life and resistances. When you have your resistances capped, there's obviously no point in getting more resistances, so just leave that out. But you should of course always try to get your resistances capped, especially in Merciless. Then secondly, you want armor and energy shield. Energy shield takes priority over armor until you have enough so that you can cast your totems reliably without running out of energy shield. And when that is sorted, you need to focus on getting armor on your gear to help with the damage mitigation. And remember, this is a temporary thing. This is only due to Arctic armor working relatively to the new beta changes. When Arctic armor gets balanced, then that is most likely going to be your preferred type of defense. But for now, you have to rely a bit on armor to help with mitigation. And of course, your granite flask. That is incredibly important for your character's survivability. Lastly, for defensive properties on your gear, I recommend getting Dexterity on your gear if possible. Dexterity is going to help you level your slower projectiles gem without you having to spec into specific notables in the skill tree. Currently with my build, I haven't had the need to use any notables. I rely solely on Dexterity from my gear. For offensive properties, the affixes you should look for is a Critical Strike Chance. Secondly, you want Spell, Lightning and Elemental Damage. Thirdly, you want Cast Speed. Yes, again, it influences how fast your totems cast their spells. And lastly, Critical Strike Multiplier. And you can argue that Multiplier should be higher, but since the Critical Strike chance of this build isn't going to be super high, you're better off scaling the damage through other means. And in case you're wondering what type of Critical Strike change you should aim for for this build, you should of course go as high as possible. Without good gear, you'll probably land around 25-30% to 30 Critical Strike chains for your spells without power charges. And again, I'm not using power charges. You can do that if you want. That'll take you higher. But that is more than enough to get the effect that we want from this uh, skill, which is to shock and deal more damage. Just 25-30% to 30 crit goes a very long way for this type of build. But obviously, getting more is of course always better. And we're not going to talk about unique items in this video. Obviously, you saw the tabular as an item you can potentially use. But besides that, I'll leave that for the full build guide when that eventually comes out. The full build guide, you can expect that sometime around when Act 4 is released. So that's the beta build guide for the Crit Ball Lightning Dual Totem Witch that I've been playing lately. Once again, please remember that this is a preliminary build guide. When Arctic Armor gets changed and the beta progresses further, I will revisit the build and update it accordingly and then make a more complete build guide. However, as it is right now, you should have everything you need to get started if you wish to try it out yourself in the beta. So with that said, guys, remember to hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching and bros, do you even nerd?